All right. Hey, hey MomoCon. Hey, hey, guys. Hello. How are you guys this morning? How are we doing? I guess it's yeah. morning for those on Pacific Standard Time. It is morning, yes. It is 10.08 a.m. Yep. Here in it's Southern noon. Los Angeles. It's it's 10, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I rolled out of bed for this? <laughs> um... Good morning. Oh, on my Discord and live. Good morning. Yeah, I guess we should introduce ourselves. Yes. So, good morning. Uh, my name is Hayden Davio. Uh, you might know me as the voice of Priestess in Goblin Slayer. I'm <laughs> Koenji in Helpful Fox and Kosan. Oh, goodness. Um, I'm a camera. All of the cameras in The Ones Within. Um, I'm Batard in Ulysses Jean d'Arc and the Alchemist Knight. Oh goodness, I don't have my MDB up, but I, I voice an anime. <laughs> no, that's why I typed out a list. I'm like, all right, I, know, ready. Like, um, I don't have the IMDB brain. Yeah. <laughs> the encyclopedic knowledge of all your characters? Come on. Yes. Oh. Um, I'm woman A in Fruits Basket. <laughs> well, dude, I'm man A. <laughs> we should get yeah. together. Oh my God. Rachel? Who yeah, are you? Go next, Rachel. Okay, um, hi guys, I voice Hero in Goblin Slayer, Lilac in uh, Recovery of an MMO Junkie, Mitori Kozaku in A Certain Scientific Railgun T, and other characters <laughs> that I can't remember off the top of my head because I just checked this out. I know, none of us can fade, but fade. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, did you guys really put dub greater than sub? What a bait. Wait, that's a, there's I a question know. mark. What there's a question that mark that after like? that. Okay, let's clear that up. All right. <laughs> that is not okay. <laughs> not okay. You need to talk to my agent about that for <laughs> Anyway, hi guys. I'm Faye Mata. Uh, I voice Aqua in Konosuba, Yukako in JoJo's, uh, Stolfo in Fate Apocrypha, Matera in Grand Blue versus. Um, I was gonna say Grim Blue versus Fantasy, but it's Grim Blue Fantasy versus uh, Petra in Fire Emblem, um, Lulu in League of Legends, Nico in Dead or Alive Six, uh, Kagami in Miraculous Ladybug, and other things like like Bitch and Shield Hero. Um, yeah, and other stuff. Dope. So I'm here. Woo. I, we just we just decided to. I mean, hey. I just know that we were supposed to show up. I didn't. I have no association with this dub over sub thing. Question mark. <laughs> In the, like, <laughs> anyway, I'm next. get a hot take in event eventually. But hi, my name is Jonah Scott. I voice uh, Legacy and B Stars, Aiden Caldwell and Dying Light Two, uh, Phoenix Man and One Punch Man from Agio and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, a bunch of other stuff. And I'm here with these lovely ladies, and we're going to talk about voice acting. Heck yeah, we are. Huh. Oh man! So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We do have some questions that we're going to run through this whole panel is about cross-country dubbing so what is the difference between canadian dubbing versus what we do in los That's angeles good, yeah, dallas go. anything so there's so many different styles of dubbing uh for instance mm -hmm. uh the first style i had experience with was uh paper scripts looking up at like big old tv in the booth at azure productions in vancouver i I love that studio. It's where I got my start. It's like this small, sweet studio and everyone's just the best. Um, I got my start on Hanako and Anne, which is a live action Japanese drama uh, where I played the best friend character, Ayako Daigo. And the uh, most unique part about that was uh, trying to dub with paper scripts is very different from how we do it at Funimation. So it's like your TV is here and you're having to hold your script and make sure it doesn't flutter at all and look up up and down to make sure you're matching the real life mouth flaps and not the anime mouth flaps um live action dubbing is very different from anime dubbing in the sense that the uh mouth shapes are a lot more pronounced which is why i love um it's like that it's like bad lip readings on youtube i don't know if you guys watch those yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are my favorite because I'm like, oh my god, you really can make any make people say anything if you match it correctly. Mm -hmm. That's just another form of dubbing for those interested. But um, that's just one style of dubbing, which is like having the paper scripts. We also at Funimation have like 
two monitors, there's different styles, there's the beat method, the chase method. So what are those? And that's what we're here to talk about. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yes. So I would like to, if you guys are interested, I would like to kind of go down the line here on Zoom and ask you guys what your first dubbing experience was like. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So since Rachel on, on the grid that I'm looking at here, <laughs> since Rachel the is grid. next to me, um, and she's my best friend, but you know, <laughs> look, I appreciate look everybody. The it's stream. fine. It's actually you, me, yeah. and Jonah, Rachel. So maybe we could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that is true. Phase, phase next. Like one, two. Yeah, no. Online is like what do do? I'm not looking at the stream because I can't because my internet will die. <laughs> I am so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that is, All right, so oh. Faye. Um, oh, uh, what was your first dubbing experience? Uh, my first dubbing experience was uh, I entered a contest at Anime Expo, <laughs> and I did it live. <laughs> oh god! Um, uh, and it was actually the the thing that um, like I got a I got a call back for this that contest, and then I ended up working with Big Zoom uh, in Los Angeles, and I uh, I recorded a character in Magi, the the Labyrinth of Magic. Yeah, and she was like cute little girl. And um, it was like beep, beep, beep. And then I had to say things. And that's how it works. That's, that was my first dubbing experience. Um, but I was a little bit, I was very new to it. I was a little bit scared, but also uh, I think because I, I don't know, I did like choir in school and stuff like that. So, so I had like an idea of musical timing. And I think that that kind of helped with, with that, with the beeps and stu stuff. So um yeah i mean i don't know what do you want to know about my first dubbing experience <laughs> that's basically it i'm very technical but it's just like yes this happened and then this no happened. you're totally i was at fine. evo actually if you guys uh um i know a lot of momocon fans are also like fighting game players i think um like tournament players um and i was at evo when i got the call back from bang zoom for the first time uh that i got um that they wanted me to come back to the studio and and uh, do my first dubbing experience. So that was really cool. Thanks. Um, would you say that like the first time getting into the booth uh, to dub, was it tough for you? Was it kind of a big learning curve? Did you kind of pick up on it quickly? Um, I can't even remember anymore. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I guess it's been a um, minute. Like first dummy, uh, I. Uh, I mean, I'm going to imagine that it was pretty natural. I, I mean, I imagine like I, I, I was trying to act, I guess, and then the timing of I don't know. At this point, I'm just making it up. I don't remember. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, nice. So over to. Jonah or Jonah Nana, as I like to call you. Yeah, yeah, I like I like that better. Um, <laughs> my um, funny enough, is this are we talking about our first dubbing experiences? Yeah. Funny enough, um, that was actually relatively recent. I didn't actually start doing anime dubbing until like the end of last year. I've been living out in LA for like four years, but uh, it took a while for my like career to gain traction. Period, and get into different studios because inner studio politics are a thing and exists in Los Angeles. Yep. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Um, and it takes a while for you to, to for me to get started. Uh, so uh, the first time I ever dubbed anything, I think was CG Flaps, which is a different experience in its, in its entirety. CG Flaps, um, it was Kengan Ashra, I think was my first thing, was the end of last year. Um, they aren't like anime flaps that are open close open close that's it and maybe sometimes if you got a really expensive episode you get an o or a, another shape in there with the open flaps but it's either open or closed but with cg flaps they can move them around like they're rubber so you are chasing flaps that are like all over the place and you have to fill that with words that kind of make sense and sometimes if the writing isn't the best you have to rewrite it in the booth and stuff. So it was, and, and that was my first time doing that kind that of stuff. Sounds hard. I don't think I've ever done CG flaps like that. <clears throat> yeah, CG it's flaps. Like, yeah, I'm like Miraculous Ladybug, but that's not the same, really. Yeah, we had CG flaps for um, Kimono Friends when I was doing Moose on Kimono Friends. Somehow I constantly forget her, but I think it's because I don't have my little Moose figure 
here with me. So I'm not like, oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> which is hilarious being Canadian. I'm like, oh yeah, I voiced him. You got a moose. <laughs> a a moose, a moose. That, that's part of the joke. Um, <laughs> but no, we had CG flaps for her and all of the characters in that show, their flap speeds were different. You, if even if they're talking uh, fast like they're like sometimes they're just like very slow like just o shapes like it was ah uh, kimono friends is such a good show but those flaps were some very different so i feel you on cg flaps being yeah. from just like 2d anime flaps it's crazy um but then i got the the wonderful reprieve yes reprieve and joy of dubbing to 2d flaps that was great but then right back to 3d with b stars but it was a little bit yeah. easier with that anyway Rachel, I'm going to set it up. You spike it. All right, here you go. Oh, Boom. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. Uh, no. Okay, so uh, my first dubbing experience was actually um, at Funimation. I was called in for an audition, and I'd never worked at Funimation before. This is my first thing ever. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm scared. Um, <laughs> but it went overall pretty well the director afterwards uh we've been we've been friends for a long time and so he he knew me and was like are you are you okay and i'm like no not really my legs are shaking oh. <laughs> yeah, it was fun um i did get called back in about a month later and had a small little part and that was a lot of fun um i cannot for the life of me remember i think her name was anastasia from gothic that was anastasia. my character. <laughs> I love that name. Yeah, and um, it was a lot of fun, and it's nerve-wracking as heck. Um, <laughs> it's still nerve-wracking to this day when you work with a new director, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know what else to say here. I'm just going to yeah. repeat things. Honestly, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, no, it's always a unique experience working with uh, like a new director because you don't know their style yet but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's nice once you kind of like get to know like as the session goes on you get to know like their style and what they want and it's it's really fun I, I love it I love oh yeah people it's nerve-wracking <laughs> at first but like once you're in the group it's great uh we do have some audience questions oh <gasps> shit um, okay I'm going to pick and choose I like I really like this most recent one that we got from Empty Bomb 96. Um, question, do you guys have acting experience outside of voice acting? We're gonna take it away, Hayden. I guess I'll start. Yeah, I'll go down the line again. I feel like that was very effective last time. Yeah, yes. I guess so. Um, I do. I got my start in theater at um like I, I've always kind of been a weird kid, just like doing voices and stuff. You're in the right place. Like, huh? You're in the right place. I know. I scream in a padded room for a living, Jonah. I'm in the yeah. right place. <laughs> Same. Sometimes they even lock me Who in. Who does that? I know, right? <laughs> like, Mitt, have you ever been locked in a booth? I will go back to the question. That, yes. <laughs> that yeah. Scary experiences okay. abound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one who's like, this isn't okay. Um... But uh, yes, I do. I got my start in theater, uh, primarily uh, doing it regularly once I got into high school, doing just like student written plays, doing like musical theater, which is my love. That is my first love. Uh, we started with Little Shop of Horrors, which was amazing because that has been a dream show of mine. That is my favorite musical of all time. Hamilton can go over there. Hamilton's great, but... Little Shop of Horrors is a classic. It's the best show ever. I will not sway on this. Rachel knows this. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to be one of the singing narrators. I never wanted to Ooh. be Audrey. I wanted to be the backup girls because they have, I love three-part harmony. I, you know me. Um, I love to sing and also act. So getting to kind of marry the two for musical theater was great. Um, I, I want to go back to theater so bad. Um, and continue doing that because there's just something so different um, about getting into full costume and like getting to play with other actors on stage, learning the blocking, learning the dances if you're doing musical theater. Um, it's just so ingrained in me at this point that I can't imagine not going back to it. So theater is primarily where I got my start, but I've also done like scene study courses. Um, 
I've done short films. I went to like a film camp uh, called, oh gosh, what was it called? It, I'm from like a really small island in Canada and there's like a small, even smaller hippie island near us that you get on a tiny little boat and you take that little boat to this island, <laughs> like this tiny ferry and you take it over. And it was called Gifts is what it was called. And mm. so it's like industry professionals, but you're in like these cool little cabins and stuff. Uh, if you know Percy Jackson, think very Camp Half-Blood, but with, it's kind of that, but for filmmaking, it's great. That's, um, cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, so that's kind of where I got my start and that's where I started kind of more pursuing voiceover. And as I realized, oh, voiceover is a viable uh, side of acting like that's a viable career and that's a whole other form I love cartoons I love anime I love video games uh sure let's try this and so I just started that way but yeah primarily theater and short film over to you my lovely Faye love it you have so much experience I guess um, <laughs> yeah mine was actually a little bit different uh in school I was actually studying to become a doctor like my family oh. um and the thing is, I always had an affinity for the art. So I was I was in drama club and I was, uh, you know, I loved musicals. Like I, I loved all the Disney movies or anything I could like watch. Like my, my family liked to go to the theater too. So um, I was a theater kid in that way. And then um, and then I did uh, I did plays in school. But it wasn't actually until after I, um, I won that contest that I mentioned that I was like, oh, this is maybe a serious thing I should actually pursue. And I started, I took classes like crazy. I, um, I studied um, improv, uh, more theater. I, I did like live action, like on camera stuff on YouTube for fun with friends too. I've done that. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, like commercial animation, like I studied a lot, but only after I realized that, because um, I mean, like a lot of kids, I was like, there's so many directions I could go. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. My 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 family was saying like you should become a doctor and and take over our practice one day. And I was like, okay, that's my destiny. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So I studied destiny. biology, chemistry, uh, psychology, like that kind of stuff, um, while having all of my extracurricular activities be um, you know related to acting and the arts. And um, you know, online I was playing video games with people, and um, I had like a I, I participated on like um, like art communities online and I would voice act for fun on like newgrounds.com and things like that. Wow. Um, so, so it's kind of like, I don't know, I've had a very confused and mixed kind of a, a upbringing. But um, the funny thing is that um, I feel like all those experiences have kind of helped my acting in, in different ways because, because I have experience with uh these different i guess facets of life it, it kind of contributes to the way that i personally uh would um uh, how do i say this i guess that, like perform it um mm, in, in yeah. an actual thing because i have emotional I have, like, recall yeah exactly emotional recall like things to pull from and yeah so i think a lot of people um especially in la, in LA like get super elitist about like you need to have like a lot of experience growing up um and and honestly like if you do if you do that from a, a young age you're you're you sh i mean you have that advantage and i think that's that's a great thing to do if you know that you want to do it you should absolutely pursue it um but i'd say also don't get discouraged if it's a late dream for you where you just realize later because you've been such a huge fan of these things that um you want to learn later sorry i got preachy there but um yeah i just um that's been my experience. I've I've learned a lot by now, and and have reinforced it and reinforced it even more. And I don't stop learning. I think I'm all, like there's so much more to learn for everybody, and that's never going to change. Um, but I think that's kind of the fun and beauty of it. All right, sorry. Yeah. Go on. Do no, you're fine. Oh, I I that's that was beautiful, Faye. Thank you very much. Welcome. I uh, I'm one of those people <laughs> that's been an actor for their most of their life um nice. i've been doing this since i was eight uh, my parents paid for acting classes and i i wanted to do it this is there was like mom and dad i want to i want to try and be an actor now whether or not i was going to be a voice actor that was not considered until like five or six years ago 
Um, but I, I did stage, I did Shakespeare, I did, uh, I did repertory theater. I did, uh, some crazy, you know, I've been nude on stage. Like I've done some weird stuff. I went to college. I got a degree in musical theater. I got a minor in broadcast journalism. Uh, I then went to uh, New York city for a week with a buddy, um, just to study like the audition process and, and follow around some auditioners off Broadway. And, uh, they murdered their bodies and it was like, it, it was like looking at, you know, 50 years of aging in like somebody who's only like 35 years old. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put my body through that. People are mean here in New York city. That was my experience at least people were mean. You could, you, there was, you could be rejected for uh, like arbitrary reasons in your audition. Uh, like you wear in the wrong color shirt or you wear in, you know, the stu stupid shoes or something like that. Um, so I made the the executive decision uh, I, after I went back to school for a couple of weeks and, and played video games and I, I listened to Matt Mercer and Titanfall and I'm like, yeah, I could do that. People get paid to do that. And I moved out to LA and slept on the floor for a while and I pounded the pavement and started from pretty much nothing. I had a few friends who helped me out. But other than that, like I said, it took me three years to, to, to book a role <laughs> and my career is only just starting. But um, yeah, I did have a lot of stage and screen and, you know, theatrical experience and stuff to back it up. But I want to press this. You don't need a piece of paper to start acting. Don't think about the $30,000 piece of paper. You don't need it. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. And Rachel? Ah, yes. Okay. So I've basically been acting since I was eight years old. Um, I was a very rebellious child at three um it's a good way to put it i was uh, my mom couldn't handle it <laughs> oh. i i have adhd and it was off the scale and she was like i don't know how to deal with this and twins so uh she threw me an acting class <laughs> hoping i could get it out there and i kind of fell in love with it and from then i wanted to be an actor um but basically i i went and did theater for a while. I was in a production of Superman the Musical when, yeah. I, was, when I was 13. Um, that was a thing. That was a thing that I did. <laughs> and after I did the stage theater, I was like, I don't like this. People are mean here. At, when, when you're a teenager, people can be very mean, especially in theater sometimes. Yep. And they were not nice. Um, so I left. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do stage theater after that. And then I... My experience too. Some people were just mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I kind of... Uh, I still wanted to do acting, but I didn't really think about voice acting until I started playing Kingdom Hearts 2 and I realized that people voiced these characters. I could do that. That sounds fun. And so I started pursuing that instead. And... Uh, it's been about three years since then. <laughs> and you're killing it. Right on. Killing yeah. it. Oh my God. I love this. I love hearing y'all's like origin stories. It's my, my... Or my superhero origin story. Yes. I was dumped I love in a it. vat of acting juice when I was five <laughs> years old. I came out with super acting powers. That was my super origin story. Yeah. Hell yeah. No, I just love all of you so much. Just I as pivoted. individuals and friends. So I love, I love hearing where you guys like got your start. Um, we have a really good question here that I like. Um, <laughs> if there's questions that you guys see like over in our chat, like feel free to take the helm. Yeah. Um, I like this one a lot. What It's from Aaron to Badman. What's up Aaron to Badman? Um, what challenges have you all faced when transitioning from dubbing in studio to dubbing from home? Now I can't answer this question. I haven't had the pleasure to dub from home. Actually, I have, but that was for a project I can't talk about. So you guys talk. <laughs> so over to you, my lovely Faye. Oh my God, where do I start? <laughs> it's been like for you. It's been, uh, it's been interesting. I mean, so uh, if you didn't tell from my last story, uh, I I am a very quick adapter to things, uh, and and I, but it doesn't it doesn't come easy. Like there's definitely like I stress I stress out a lot, but I like get things done very quickly while I'm stressing out. <laughs> that makes sense. So um, 
uh, when I realized I needed to dub from home, all I really had was this padded closet. Um, and, and that's okay. Um, and oh gosh, I don't want to like, I don't want to scare anyone either. But like, I, I, I basically felt the need to get a very expensive booth to put in, inside oh. my house. <laughs> um, so I bought a studio bricks. Um, oh, you, you actually don't, you managed don't actually to get need one. To go that far, but oh yeah, yeah, they're they're like on crazy back order, or it takes a very long time because they come from Spain. Um, not trying to flex, it's just like it it takes a long time. A lot of people want these, um, and it's it's not cheap. It's it's a lot of money. So it was kind of a scary thing where I was like, I'm actually gonna go all in on this, aren't I? <laughs> like like for a while. Um, and I'm not super public about this, but for those of you who don't know, like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually end up becoming a doctor. Uh, I did go down voiceover path, but I also have another job in the tech industry. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, I'm always like doing multiple things at the same time. And uh, getting a whole vocal booth to put in my house uh, felt like a real commitment. Like, uh, well, it, I guess, oh gosh, how do I say this? It's, it's a really weird conversation for me because I I always had these uh, I, I always feel like I'm being pulled in many different directions and I'm very passionate about about voiceover but I can also be very passionate about another thing uh, like gaming or um, or like the the project management stuff I'm doing in the tech industry um, and for me like I love doing all of it but uh, when you feel like you're going all in on something it's like it's like, nope, this is it. Like, I'm definitely like, I love it this much. I'm, I love voiceover this much that I'm going to dub from home for however long it takes. Um, like, I'm, I'm basically buying this engagement ring to uh, voiceover. <laughs> like, I'm getting married to voiceover. That's what it felt like. Um, and so I, uh, yeah, I've been dubbing from home. Uh, and, and I got very emotional about it because it's just like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's it's just something that, um, I don't know. I, I've just always been like, I don't really know what I want to do, but I'm gonna do all this all the time, all of this at this. Like I'm doing the thing that I'm like, I, but I don't know if this is actually what I want to do forever. Um, but this is like, a, I'm doing this forever now. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Um, and dubbing from home has kind of pushed you in that. What's been um, What's been the experience like working with studios from your home studio? Um, so, uh, uh, so far so good. So far so good. It's been, yeah, I guess uh, before I had my like whole box setup thing, I was, uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. Like uh, someone would start taking a shower, like a, like my neighbor would start taking a shower and then there'd be like, <sighs> in the background, I'd be like, oh, oh, sorry guys. I think, I think my neighbor's taking a shower. <laughs> um, can you hear that? Um, yeah, you can hear that, can't you? Uh, kill me, please. <laughs> it was just like, it was awkward. Uh, uh, sometimes that would happen. Sometimes there would be like random loud banging, like pot noises. And then it just, it's just like, wh who, why would someone be doing that right now? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, so uh, it was a big change uh, to get the booth for me but it's not necessary like you don't need a booth in your home it's just like uh it was I, I didn't need to time things out in weird ways anymore because there are yeah. certain times of the day where it's like okay my neighbor is definitely gonna take a random shower at I don't know 6 p.m mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like okay I gotta work around that <laughs> uh but yeah I also came up with like weird ideas because I just do this, but um, for everything that I've been dubbing, uh, except for this Netflix, one, uh, uh, everything that I've been dubbing uh, in, uh, like through the uh, the pandemic, I've been crediting to a different name, um, which is like a, a virtual character that I haven't announced yet, but I want to make it so it's like, oh, this is their story where she's like an aspiring voice actor online, and then when those things actually come out, she like kind of made it or something. I don't know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Making weird things. But I like, I have all these concepts drawn and everything. Anyway, that's been my at home dubbing experience. Just going crazy, you know, and then doing all kinds of stuff, randomly crying, but you know, <laughs> making progress. As and, you do. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next. Sorry, I took up a lot of time. Go ahead, Jonah. Um, so the question was about remote dubbing, yes? 
Yes. What, okay. uh, what was, uh, what challenges have you faced when transitioning from dubbing in studio to dubbing at home? Okay. So a couple big things. I mean, I was in several shows when, when everything, you when know, then. started to happen. And, um, my thought was the same as everyone else is around me, especially my roommates who like, uh, I have a bunch of voice acting roommates and pe voice acting friends that live above me. And like this whole apartment complex is a bunch of voice actors. And we're all like, oh, shh, what are we going to do? <laughs> so we, we sat down and we thought about it. And we're like, yeah, guys, we, we've been doing this for our entire lives. We don't have to change a thing. We don't have to do anything. It's the 40, 50 plus voice actors that have been doing this for 25 years that don't know how to operate a PC that need to worry about this stuff. I was freaking out because I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I don't know. I'm new out here. If I don't have this, this, and this, are they gonna are they gonna blacklist me? Am I gonna get shafted? Is the studio not gonna use me during the pandemic? Like, what is gonna happen? No, that ain't it. I have a, I also have a degree in oral physics, which is like how the science of sound works, and I made it so that my booth sounds amazing. And I don't have a booth. I, I do it in my closet. It sounds, it sounds fantastic. So good. It sounds fantastic. Like I had the Source Connect guy the other day come in to check for another studio. And uh, I was worried because it's the first time I had to do a had to, had to do a Source Connect session. I try and talk people out of it because Source Connect is way Discord has way better audio codecs than Source Connect. I, my point stands aside, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, he called me up and he's like, "Dude, you're good. You your your studio sounds amazing. What, what did you do?" I'm like, "It's my closet. I have a bunch of clothes in there. I figured out how to move things around." Yeah, it's, so you don't fine. have don't to spend a bajillion dollars. <laughs> Yeah, no, I spent I spent probably 20 bucks on LEDs in there so I can actually read my scripts. But other than that, I, I yeah, it's, 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 come, come to my streams. It's jank AF. Um, I love it. But it sounds good. And uh, yeah, I the dubbing was hard because hold on, let me take a sip. I'm getting a little dry. I feel that <laughs> you good. The dubbing was hard because the shows that I was in, we had to transition from working in a studio halfway through the show to the last half of the show, not working in the studio. I know for a fact, there are several actors that were in the shows that I, were in, that I was in that were recording off of you know Blue Yetis in the middle of their living rooms. Like I know for a fact. So I was just like, okay, some of these shows at a certain point are just gonna sound weird. They're just oh gonna sound God. weird. Really? Yep, they're just gonna sound weird. And I went and listened back to some of the trailers and, and, and some of the other uh, like, uh, what is it? Audio tests that they had. They sound okay. If you're listening on a TV, you probably won't be able to hear it. But if you have headphones on, you're definitely going to be able to hear that there's a difference. Um, but some of them are just going to sound weird. There's not a whole lot you can do save buying somebody a kit. I know Funimation was trying to do this, but buying somebody a kit and shipping the kit out to record yeah, remotely from that. their home. Yeah. Uh, but it's been fairly smooth for me because I have, you know, I'm I'm stupid and I bought, you know, a thousand dollar microphone and you know I have a, a two thousand dollar preamp and I like to do this. I like audio stuff, so and I like my voice to sound good. So I invested in that stuff. But um there are some people who have been doing this for 30 plus years that don't know how to record themselves, period, because they've never had to. They've gone to their agents to audition, they've gone to their agent studio to like do 20 auditions in a day and then not worry about it for a month, you know. Uh, but here in Jonah Land, we grind every day, right, boys? So we we get in the booth, hey. we audition every day, we come out, we'll and then it. we stream. That's what we do. So it's been it's been it's been uh, there's been a learning curve, but it hasn't been gratuitous. It hasn't been as awful as people think it has been. And people who are my age and younger or just slightly older, um, we're just kind of looking at everyone else going, you, you need to get, you need to figure out how to do this if you want to keep doing this. Cause this is the new, this is the new normal, but yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for years. I, I've been doing remote projects for years, so nothing really changed. Hey. Um, hey. Rachel. All right. So the at home dubbing experience from studio experience. All right. As Jenna mentioned, uh, Funimation is doing actor kits. That is a thing that's happening. So if you're in a show this season, they've been giving out basically little microphones and stands, and then you have them on the phone with you while you have an iPad in front of you with the script and just editing the lines as you go along, hoping it matches the lip flaps, trying your best to get it to all match up and recording each line as you go along. It's, it's pretty strenuous and stressful when you first start. 
Um, but honestly, it's not that bad. It's a little different. I prefer people to be around me when I'm dubbing stuff personally, because I just am a social butterfly and I like that experience. I like having the director right there. But I do like having the director on the phone as well, just to tell me how they think it sounds. Um, there are little bits of notes, things like that, that you can go back and fix. It's, it's really nice. Um, it's just difficult to get used to. And eventually you just kind of have to get used to it because it's going to be the new normal for a while, as Jonah said. So <laughs> yeah. that's been my at-home dubbing experience so far. Hey, I know chat's going to flame me, but I got to go to the bathroom really quick. Hold on. <laughs> All right, that's fine. We can riff. You. <laughs> Everybody has to go to the bathroom at some point. It's fine. I have a normal bodily function. We're human. Like, ooh, ooh, are you drinking one of those green tea thingies? Those are good. Ooh, jasmine and green tea. Ooh, jasmine, yeah. I yeah. love those. those good. Dude, I'm so, so good. happy. At Funimation, we have like a cooler full of like snacks and drinks and they have they have those like they do jasmine drinks so whenever i go in i'm like well, i'm just gonna take this oh nice this nice drink. we they have <laughs> we have hockey we have like flaming hot cheetos and i'm like yes <laughs> but we also have but stuff. we also have apples and bananas and healthy things yeah, there's healthy stuff <laughs> but after a good session i want some cheetos <laughs> i also I want m and seen some questions from the chat in the the zoom chat yeah, no, that's where oh, I've been reading. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. you have. Okay. Yeah, that's where I have them. Um, so I actually like this question a lot. Um, it was, what was the anime that got you all interested in dubbing? Hmm. Uh, and that is from Legacy OSU. What's up? I love you, OSU. Um, you're the best. <laughs> uh, for me, um, it was Sergeant Frog, actually. <laughs> That is next to D. Gray Man. That is my favorite anime of all time. I love that show. I love those alien frogs. Um, my best friend in middle school, she got me into anime. Um, I'd always kind of had an interest in it. Um, I'd always liked um, like Sailor Moon and Pokemon and stuff like that. But she showed me Sergeant Frog and I binged the hell out of it. And I watched every episode I don't know if I ever finished it. I don't know. Um, I read the entire manga. I got into it and I was like, okay, I like this. And then I, that was the show where I started paying attention to the facts. Like, oh, this is a show that's in Japan and they're dubbing it into, okay, interesting. And I started researching that process, watching uh, voice actor panels on YouTube. I started listening to uh j michael tatum and terry Doties, who are now wonderful friends of mine oh, yeah. and i love them both very much um i started listening to their podcast that anime show it's where i learned to cuss um <laughs> sure. um wait, wait, wait where you learned to cuss where i learned to cuss or cuss how i do now <laughs> cuss how i do now like a sailor you yes. can imagine you being all like yeah. oh, if you've noticed i've tried to catch know. myself several oh, times blah. You, you know me, I Joe. Sh- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, they they would have like voice actor guests on. They'd talk about uh, the dubbing process. They'd talk about uh, just the industry. And I was like, okay. Yo, wait, I'm an actor. I want to do this. And Sergeant Frog is kind of, was my jumping off point going, oh yeah, no, I want to. This made me realize I want to do this. And Um, so yeah, no, that was basically my, my anime that made me go, yeah, no, this is what I need to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what I want to do. And I just went from there, but yeah. So hey. was there an anime that made you go, oh yeah, no, I'm into the dubbing side of things or was, um, I don't know about like one that was like, I want to do dubbing. Um, but I, I enjoyed anime. I just always enjoyed anime. So like Sailor Moon, but like I was, I was a big fan of Sailor Moon. I mean, as much as I, I actually can't remember anything about like old Sailor Moon because, when, <laughs> but I watched it as a kid. <laughs> I don't like, I just remember being in love with the, the fact that there were like these strong female warrior characters that were um, 
just I don't know they were they were kick ass they were like I, you I didn't I wasn't used to seeing like women fighting and uh I don't know ha- like being the central characters yes. um so yeah like it it was actually a huge dream come true when I ended up in Sailor Moon uh I'm in Sailor Moon Sailor Stars as a, a sailor oh my god what is her name <laughs> I'm blanking <laughs> Sailor Aluminum Siren who Ooh. looks awesome she's like ice blue like my room Aluminum um, siren. so it was just like uh, amazing uh and they had never dubbed that that um Arc. that particular series yeah. that part because it was too controversial to be dubbed at the time apparently because there's like uh i guess like there's lesbians and trans people and they were like that's not okay and like it's 2020 okay. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh so uh, yeah, so um, it's it's like crazy to me. Like, all right, I'm gonna flex a little bit because I'm just so proud of this. And I just I, I love it so much. Just just being a fan of Sailor Moon growing up, and then now being like the original voice of this character in dub. Like, it's so cool. I can't handle it. It's, so um, yeah, it's like it's come full circle for me. Yeah. What about you? Um, I really didn't move out here to dub anime honestly um i moved out here to do video game voice acting and a lot of my buddies did anime dubs and while i was trying to pursue video games they're like you should really try out doing dubs and i'm like i don't know i like anime i've seen trigun i've I, i've seen clonade i've seen the big netflix things angel beats you know i've i've i've, I've consumed anime before but it wasn't until like my roommates we started watching naruto two years ago i think and uh uh the pandemic has since stopped our group watches but um i guess after i moved out here i started watching naruto shippuden dubbed and i'm just like holy shit this is this this is this is really good this is something i can you know you know pick and pick things from and and get inspired by um and I guess I guess the the Shippuden dub was something in anime that inspired me to to keep going. But the thing that got me out here was uh, Matt Mercer in Titanfall. That got me out here. That uh, I played through it, and I'm, I was thoroughly immersed in the video game. He's a demigod to me, and still haven't got to meet the man. But um, I've been planning in my showers for about a year what I'm going to say to him, and it's all going to go out the window. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm I guess. Yeah, Naruto does that. My, I yes. don't have my weeb card yet because I haven't finished Naruto, but I'm close. I'm I haven't really, either, so I'm, I'm I don't close. know if I get a weeb. Through the pain card, I got my learner's permit. I'm through the pain arc. I got my learner's permit. I need to finish. Okay, it yeah. And <laughs> I want to know what, like, why you moved for video games, though. Maybe after this. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Rachel. Oh. So as I mentioned previously, the thing that really got me into voiceover was actually Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> That's where I realized that you can actually do this for a living and have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, the anime that got me into like anime voiceover. Oh boy, I'm gonna. Hot Pieces of Mia. That was the one that got me into anime voiceover. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, about series was just so fun and silly. And I, which series? The Melancholy of Hattori Suzumiya. Ooh, yeah. A good classic. <laughs> um, does it help that Hero kind of, as people keep mentioning, the headbands with uh, Haruhi? So. <laughs> so. Can you do that dance? I, I, I used, used to. to. Be. I used to yeah. be able to. <laughs> I cosplayed yeah. Ezreal, I could do it, but I can't anymore. You I cosplayed Ezreal? Yeah, I cosplayed oh, Ezreal a oh, while wow, I cosplayed wow. Mikuru. It's okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> of course you did. I did that. I was going to say, when your hair was like down to your back, it was pretty. I mean, it's getting there again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, you, you cut it after your wedding, right? Yes, I cut it all off after my wedding. Yeah, that's when it was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love your uh, anyway, I could gush about that forever. <laughs> but okay, so I'm going to. But see you all in your cute relationships. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. I really like this question, and I think it would be an interesting one to cap it off. We didn't really end up talking about like. Uh, like the, the process. Of 
dubbing, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's whatever. It's People fine. What if you want. guys have questions, you can always <laughs> hit us up on Twitter. I'm probably going to be streaming next week, and I know Jonah streams regularly. So if you have cross every day dubbing questions, I might actually we have a 10 minute warning. So yeah, I'm and I'm streaming go. later. Pardon I'll me. Your autograph and stuff. And you can ask me yeah. questions during it. Yeah, if we're doing because a lot of us are doing autograph, Instagram autograph. So if you have questions mm-hmm. about that, it's a good time to ask us. So I really liked this question here. If I can find it, if I don't have my glasses on. Uh, what role have you played that you wish more people knew about? And that's from Bella T. Uh, for me, I was about to say Batard, but honestly, Ulysses, Jean d'Arc and the Alchemist Knight was an interesting show. <laughs> Um, but that was my first time playing like a, uh, a boy. But the thing about Batard is he dressed as a girl, uh, because his cousin Charlotte voiced by my wonderful friend, Amber Lee Connors, who is just amazing and adorable. And I, I love her so much. Um, he was basically forced to dress as a girl. And then later in the show, it's, uh, mentioned that he continued to dress girly and cute and uh more feminine because he was interested in another character named alan song so it's like okay i'm gonna dress more feminine because i like him um and it it was kind of a unique experience because with batard it was just slightly lower in my in my register and it's like okay so we're not going like full like them dude or we're just playing it very real and I wish more people knew about that character because he's so special to me as an experience but that's kind of like a little selfish uh but honestly I want more people to watch the ones within because I love these little pic cameras all I said was play and it was my first <laughs> time playing like a long-running like creature style character and that show was so good it's like an isekai but like actual video game nerds. That's the best way I can explain it. But I wish more people uh, knew about that show and I wish more people knew about the cameras because that is one of my favorite characters to play and all I had to say was one thing. But Mm -hmm. it was an interesting acting experience getting to emote in like show emotion with just one word. And, but yeah, that's kind of, that's me, but also Helpful Fox and goes on. It's a great show. It's like a hug in a show. Just, just watch anime, guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, what about you? Watch Toonami. We're all on Toonami. Watch Toonami. It sounds so cute. <laughs> yeah, no, we're all on Toonami, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the question is, what do we wish, like a role? What that... character do you wish more people knew about that you voiced? I don't really wish that. I don't know. It's just like, if people find it, then that's cool. But like, for me, I just kind of like... I kind of like making it <laughs> and then if it means something to someone i mm. i love hearing about it but i don't really like i don't well i mean maybe there is but i can't really think of one right now uh i mean maybe i'll pick the the sailor moon one because it's just like you have to only get it on uh blu-ray right now i think mm-hmm. yeah. and uh and yeah that that role means a lot to me but i don't know i don't really like yeah, I guess if you if you come across something I work on, then that's that's dope. But I don't personally have. Well, actually, yes, I do. I have two. Um, <laughs> one, I, they're both they're both video game characters. One, for a reason, I I just think the character is freaking cool, and at, like the, what I wanted to be as an adult when I was fifteen. And that's Randy Orlando from Trails of Cold Steel, who was like, it's basically just my voice, like a little bit deeper with a little bit more like suaveness to it. He's a playboy. He's an, he's a, a detective. He's so cool. He's so much cooler than me. And like, I, I, I wish people could just like appreciate Randy from the fact of just he's a cool dude. Two, I wish people knew more about Aiden Caldwell because I don't know shit about Aiden Caldwell yet. I wish new. <laughs> I wish everybody knew about Aiden because I I want to learn Aiden. more about the character that I voice. And I uh, fingers crossed. Come on, guys. Please Dying tell me more. Too, guys. Yeah, give me lore, Techland. Give me the deep lore. I care so much about this game. 
<laughs> I am so excited for that game. It looks so fun, but mm-hmm. also terrifying. But those are the only two, I guess. It's better than. Oh, I think that would change everything. Like a yeah. character you've done that you wish you knew more about. Yeah, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, what is the role that you have played that you wish more new people knew about? Uh, uh, <laughs> Lilac from MM- Recovery of an MMO Junkie is probably the one. Um, I love that show. It's such a cute show. I've only seen it sub, though. <laughs> I, I just, I watched it like a long time ago. Uh, I would love to see it dubbed. Yes, it's so good. I love my character, Lilac. She's so hyper and so cute. And trying to speak that fast for those two lines is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. But um, uh, that one and probably Ancient Mage's Bride. I know a lot of people know that anime, but I voiced the mom. And people know that. So, (laughs) yeah. Those are Um. Yeah, we have two minutes here, so oh, I'm gonna say. Go. <laughs> I said go. Go. Um, thank go. you, guys. first off, thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us and just watching us nerd out about this career that we love so much. Like, I honestly, I've sat down and thought, it's like, okay, is there anything else that I want to do with my life? Nope. There sure this is. is. It. I'm doing it. I'm doing all right. I'm all in, in for a penny and for a pound. I Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um but thank you for hanging out with us and giving us the space to you know express how much we love this show good yeah, question thanks for mm-hmm. coming, great guys. questions from, from yeah oh my god y'all had yes yeah you had really good questions i don't think we touched any of the ones that we wrote down did we honestly no I, we, touched <laughs> one. we did one. <laughs> oh, one. okay and honestly it was fine yeah yeah i more i was more down to like interact with you guys and um Read the question. Really Can we? Like uh, about other quick people. question. Are we allowed to plug our streams? Yeah, I think we could actually. Yeah. I mean, I have a whole thingy later too. Okay, cool. All right, who's who wants go to go ahead, first? Hayden. Okay, um, I haven't streamed in a while, but I will be starting to stream again on Tuesday. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so you can find me on Twitter at Hey Bale Voice. Um, H-A-Y-B-A-L-E voice. And you can also find me on twitch.tv slash Voice. Oftentimes I'm either doing just like art streams or streaming the same games over and over again, like Bendy and the Ink Machine because it's my favorite game in the world. It's my favorite indie game. Um, I play a lot. Uh, I love playing choice-based games or horror games. So if you guys are into that, I'm just hanging out being really terrible at video games. That's just... I'm bad at it, but I love it. So if you guys want to hang out, make fun of me for being bad, or just ask me questions about VO, anything of the sort, come hang out with me over there. We'll just we'll, we'll chill. It'll be mm. fun. But also, also her me. art is amazing. Huh? Yes. Also, yeah, her, her, her art is amazing. Go up. Thanks, friend. All I draw are my D&D characters. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love your D&D inspiration characters. is inspiration. Okay, what's your, what's your channel so we can put it in the chat? Yeah, here. I will link my channel. Okay, go ahead. Also, um, if you are into d and uh, I'm going to be playing in like an hour over on Dork Tales. We're going to be playing It's Always Magical in Fandelia, so you can watch a and d stream for like three hours after this if you're interested. But yeah, over to you, Faith. Okay, um, so my my channel is at uh, twitch.tv slash Vimata. I've been doing a lot of like Smash Bros 1v1s and Smash Bros Ultimate. Um, uh, and I do some real talk streams late at night. You could like ask me questions. Oh, but the way the, the one v ones work is if you beat me, then you get like uh, AMA time with me in Discord for like uh, some time. But like everybody gets to hear you. But you can use that time to to uh, meme to uh, ask me any questions, that kind of stuff. It's fun. It's fun. Nice. Um, yeah, later on today, uh, I think four hours from now, I'm gonna do an autograph stream. Uh, I posted a link in the chat. Uh, to a Twitter post that I made, but I'm still, uh, I have like a, a store open if you want to buy some autographed prints, and then I'm signing them live at that time. So uh, check it out. I'm also doing cameos. If you want to roast your friend or cheer them on or something, I'll, I do that too. Um, it's all in that link. Anyway, cool. hope to see you guys around. And thank you everybody Ooh. from my chat that came in to support. I, I see you guys. Love it. Love you guys. I have recently started streaming on twitch a lot more um i did i've streamed for three years like three days a week
but I started streaming almost every day. And uh, it's kind of gotten wild. A lot of people are coming to watch. It's getting a little, it's getting crazy. And uh, we're experiencing pretty exponential growth. Um, so thank you, everybody who's out here. It's twitch.tv slash Jonas Scoot. I uh, play a lot of competitive video games. Last night I played uh, Valorant with uh, Zach Aguilar, Alejandro Saab, um, my buddy who's a global CS player, Jokin. And then uh, the week before that, we had Ben Diskin on and Brittany Lauda. We played Jackbox with you know, Matt Shipman and a bunch of other people from Bunny. And uh, it's great. I have a new content every day. Come hang out. I got, uh, we, we play games together. We, uh, I've got another, we got, a, I, my autograph session is next Saturday. Um, my store is open as well. If you want to come by and get an autographed print of some kind, we got some wonderful art. It's very minimalist. It's very beautiful. Um, put it on a frame, put it on the wall, have your friends ask questions about it. It's B stars. <laughs> That's the answer. It's B stars. All right. Twitch.tv slash Jonas Scoot. <laughs> I highly recommend all these people. <clears throat> Follow Rachel on her Twitter. At yeah, what's your Twitter? Rachel, because she's amazing, and I love oh her. Oh my god, it's my Twitter is uh, at Dex Holder Rachel. Uh, if you can't tell, I like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so, Come on, yay! Check it right, out. Guys. So thank you guys so much for coming to hang out. Follow our Twitters. Come hang out with us on Twitch. We love you so much, yes. and we wouldn't be doing this if you guys weren't watching. So yes, thank you so much. Yes hanging out yeah. with us and supporting <laughs> thank and you so much to, to uh, yeah. momocon to the mods yeah. and yes thank you out. momocon thank you. and the mods for setting this up thank you so yeah. much mm. this was so much fun this so was fun. amazing highlight of my day <laughs> <laughs> all right i love right. you guys i love all my voice actor friends here thank i love the mods yeah. I love momocon and i love you guys thank you guys so much for joining us we will see you later Bye. Bye.